Hello everyone, welcome to Curiosity, the monthly roundup of science related stories. This is for the month of August 2024. At the onset, the show got delayed. The reason is that my mom is not well. She was in ICU for the last uh, five days and uh, she just got discharged two days back. Yeah, she has uh, heart related problems, a heart failure, you know, and yeah, things got a little bit critical. So that forced us to go to the hospital, uh, a nearby hospital. She's okay now. She's getting better. Okay. So uh, coming to the month, uh, this show, that's why today is, uh, you see that it's on six. So six days of delays, like extraordinary in the history of curiosity. Oh, by the way, this is episode number 58. It's one of the longest running science shows in India. And yeah, I'm, I'm planning to continue till my life. You know, sharing uh, the knowledge is always joysome, isn't it? Joyful. Okay, as usual, we'll start with the etymology of the word August. August is named after Augustus Caesar, the, um, you know, the Roman Empire, you know. Uh, he was the founder of Roman Empire and he was an empire when BC became AD, you know, the turn of this uh, era, isn't it? Uh, it's just like july the last month july was also named after uh, a roman empire julius caesar isn't it and as per florigraphy this is the month of uh, uh, gladiolus and poppy flowers right now coming to the articles published last month and science related news first and foremost the most important news of uh, this month's curiosity is the breakthrough hiv drug lanapavir right it's it's touted as miracle cure for hiv right it's not really aids but for hiv right to suppress the growth of hiv lena kapavir right so we so before this particular thing we right now the scenario is that we have retroviral pills you need to eat uh, daily you see to suppress the growth of hiv so to to prevent the replication of the hiv virus right uh, yeah, so this, uh, you know, these drugs can be used as PREP, that is pre-exposure prophylaxis, so before even getting exposed to a suspected HIV plus person, you can take this tablet, you know, and then the chances are extremely low. But then, uh, you know, it is not really zero yet, but this one is pretty interesting. It is not like daily you need to take a tablet. But it's just two jabs a year. That is, after every six months, a person has to take this injection. Then it is 100% safe that the person will not get HIV. And those who already have HIV cannot spread it and cannot increase the HIV load. You know, CD4 load in the blood. So that is really interesting breakthrough. And uh, the drug is uh, uh, manufactured by... Uh, you know, Gilead Life Sciences, an American-based multinational company. And one of the articles which came in uh, Guardian, I was reading about this article about the capitalist monopoly. The drug, the injection right now, it cost 40,000 US dollar. But as per this investigative journalism of the Guardian, the manufacturing cost, including 30% profit, 30% profit, uh, Gilead can sell it for 40 US dollar. But see, they're selling for 40,000 US dollar. So, uh, uh, not in any time sooner, the market is going to hit the mass market. And of course, uh, because it's patented, generic versions cannot be manufactured in uh, uh, developing countries. So, most of the population will not get benefited out of this. That is that's a sad reality. So the study is pretty interesting because uh, it's a large sample study. The you know the the study which I linked up in the show notes, around fifty uh, five thousand people participated. It's basically done in uh, sub-Saharan Africa where HIV AIDS is very prevalent. So out of five thousand ladies, so they separated into two groups. Two thousand five hundred got the standard PRP Truvada, that is uh, the pill, the, which they had to take to minimize the risk of getting HIV. And the rest, 2,500 got this injection. And in this 2,500 who got injection, not a single person became HIV positive. While the other group, 2,500, who is taking the currently available best PREP, that is pre-exposure profile access to WADA, 
many got HIV. The reason is that it's not that the drug failed, but because people, uh, you know, uh, do not take every day. That is the issue. Maybe it is f uh, because of the forgetfulness or because of the side effects of the uh, oral uh, PREP drug. So this is really interesting news. I hope that uh, more generic versions do come up or the governments in uh, around the world can do something about it. It's, it's pretty interesting. Now coming to another science related story rather environmental catastrophe happened in my home state, uh, Kerala. In Wayanad, more than three, oh, 350 persons died and more than 100 still missing. So the count is going to increase because of a landslide. Uh, you know, an extreme rain followed by landslide in Wayanad swept away the whole villages, you know. So unfortunately, we don't really have uh, landscape predicting systems in force. It is everywhere in Japan. So that is why landslides landslide not landscape right so landslides usually is not that lethal uh, in japan it doesn't mean the landslides are not happening in that country it's all mountainous country but they have a very good prediction system so i hope uh, india also brings in some of these uh, you know the the prediction systems of uh, landslide uh, basically these are all sensor based right yeah so that can really the science can save lives you know and why this happened? Many people say it's because of the uh, Western Kurds exploitation. You know, like the Shola forest is converted into the tea gardens and spice gardens. Well, that have implications on uh, local ecosystems, no doubt about it. But this phenomenon of this extreme rain, it's not just happening in Wayanad, right? It's happening everywhere. Like in Uttarakhand, it happened. Himachal Pradesh also happening and many places beyond India, right? Like in Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and even Philippines, right? Two weeks back, there has been a, a horrendous rain. And yeah, and many death, many casualties happened in uh, Philippines too. So the reason why this happening is that, well, a uh, very interesting story I linked up in the show notes too, is uh, an article which I recently read uh, in BBC. Uh, the article says about something called uh, flying rivers. Can you believe it? So the whole rivers are flying overhead of you. And these rivers are basically nothing but water vapors because of the oceanic warming. So ocean, like Indian Ocean, is warming at an extremely high rate because of the global warming. So when the atmosphere gets warm, most of the temperature is absorbed by the ocean. And ocean gets warm. As ocean gets warmer, more and more vapor gets into the atmosphere. And this vapor makes the so-called rivers, the secret rivers, flying rivers. You cannot see that rivers by your, ha by your naked, uh, you know, naked eyes. You need satellite imagery which works on infrared, you know, IR radiations and also microwave radiations, right? Infrared and microwave, you can actually image the extent of these rivers. And I was really shocked to see how big this, how large this can be. 2,000 kilometer till 5,000 kilometer is their average life, you know, length of these rivers. That's really long, isn't it? And the width is approximately 200 kilometer. And the depth of these rivers are around 3 kilometers. So it is really massive. And because of these rivers, this kind of excessive rainfall happens sporadically around the world, especially in this you know, South and East Asian countries. So all because of the global warming. So it's a collective responsibility for all of us to curtail the global warming, right? Uh, by taking a unanimous decision to fight it. So we have to bring that into our lifestyle too, you know. And also this uh, flying rivers are attributed to increase in uh, humidity, right? Here in Punjab also, the humidity has become unbearable even now these days, you know. So, yeah, this uh, is very interesting story that is about us, the flying secret rivers. Now, the new blood test has come for detecting Alzheimer's at early stage with 90% accuracy. I was not really impressed. 90% accuracy means there is a chance of 10% uh, false positive. But look at it. Right now, the best possible way to detect the Alzheimer's disease CT scan as well as cognitive tests. 
and both of this the accuracy is much lesser than 90% so this is very interesting news now how about alcohol is it moderate drinking good for health well there has been several studies that shown that moderate drink little bit of uh, wine for example like red wine in france there has been a very famous study right people who drinks red wine tend to live longer because of resveratrol the so-called french paradox though french eat a lot of uh, fat you know meat red meat they tend to have lesser coronary artery disease why well anyway the news uh, finding is against a large data study that shows that this is incorrect moderate drinking is still harmful for human health and previous studies that shown that the drinking is good i mean the moderate uh, uh, drinking is good like the french one had this conflict of interest if you read who found who fund the study you will see that it is basically the the alcohol lobby is the funders that influenced its uh, you know conclusion that uh, yeah moderate booze is good for the planet or so uh, for for human health you know so yeah that is very interesting story now anxiety and depression can it raise the heart disease risk the blood clot in uh, uh, you know the uh, the coronary arteries ischemic heart disease yes that is a new study says that is pretty interesting and uh, well dogs are renowned for its uh, you know its uh, uh, smell perception isn't it can they smell when we become sad yeah that is what the new study say when uh, humans became sad the owners became sad dogs can smell it and that makes them sad too that's very interesting isn't it next story is about gender managers with a daughter tend to be uh, you know tend to uh, not to follow that conservative gender stereotype or the boundaries between uh, both the genders that's pretty interesting it's not just that male managers have this issue with gender stereotyping but also females too right and both the managers when they have a daughter then the the gender stereotyping is that boundary is you know minimized you see that is very very interesting so well then um, uh, one of the very interesting quote which i came across while reading this story is don't live a life which impress your parents live one that impress your kids live a life that impress your kids don't live a life impress your parents pretty interesting isn't it yeah next story weight loss power of oats we all know the oats is fantastic in case you want to reduce your weight and how does it work so the new story new study published last month look molecular mechanism of the oats on the weight loss and what they found is that it mimic one of the very popular weight loss drug is it's an injection called ozempic so ozempic work as glp1 agonist agonist is anti antagonist right it, it it improves the binding of this receptor so that is what the glp1 agonist of the ozempic and oats is quite similar that is very interesting isn't it so oats is like a poor man's ozempic that is what the new story say very interesting and the next story is about diabetes a new drug which is a basically a combination of two two moieties can boost the insulin production of the beta cells in islets of langerhans right in pancreas by 700 percentage can you believe it 700 percentage boosted insulin production very interesting that is a basically it's a combination of two drugs i told you the one the first one is a glp1 agonist ozempic you see and oats is also quite good right that is why oats is very good for uh, controlling the diabetes and also a plant a natural alkaloid called harmine right so this harmine is found in various plant and also even in insects right many plant species do have one example is tobacco to have this harmine you know so this harmine combined with ozempic and other drugs which have this glp1 agonist boost the insulin production by 700 percentage that's pretty interesting isn't it 
and uh, yeah so basically uh, you know this um, the harmine the molecule how it acts it inhibits an enzyme called dyrk1a which is found in the beta cell and because this enzyme is inhibited it boosts the production of insulin very interesting and today's uh, bbc I, I read a very interesting story about um, um, about a, a liquid diet you know by the nhs that is national health uh, services uk they introduced a liquid diet uh, with strictly i think 700 uh, calories per day right so it's like protein shakes and soup right and uh, those which are under liquid diet could able to reverse 100 percentage uh, success rate reverse type 2 diabetes very interesting story again please check the show notes for this story uh, next story nearly half of the cancer deaths in the u.s can be preventable by lifestyle modification half of the cancer in the US well it could be the same in rest of the world too right that is very very interesting so what are these uh, the factors the lifestyle factors biggest factor is smoking then excess body weight alcohol consumption like our first story then the meat especially a red and processed meat low consumption of fruits vegetables fiber and calcium that is also a risk factor so you need to increase the consumption of all these things fruits vegetables fiber and calcium right yeah next story underground cave has been found on the moon that's a very interesting story uh, the, the the you know this cave is 45 meter wide then up to 80 meters long and 150 meters beneath the surface of the moon and because it's a cave it's beneath the surface this area is not exposed to the asteroids right it's very safe place and that is one of the challenge of a lunar station in case we are planning to build a station uh, you know to colonize the moon uh, yeah so most of the lunar surface is not habitable because of the uh, asteroid we don't uh, you know we have a thick atmosphere while moon don't have it right it, it has a very thin atmosphere so asteroids can impact a lot of asteroid impacts do happen that is why if you see the moon you can see a lot of crat craters well on earth you cannot see that much of the craters right so yeah so this cave is uh, approximately 14 tennis court the area wise and what excited me more is that it shows the relics of human evolution too right in evolutionary history we get excited we were cave men and cave women right and after all these years, after a million years, and we still get excited by hearing a cave story. Interesting, right? Now, 12th story. Consuming more oxygen during workouts, like running, right? If you uh, deliberately inhale more oxygen, that is by, uh, by what? By taking deep breath consciously, but somehow we tend to forget it, right? Or by using some oxygen concentrator. So... If you can able to increase the oxygen during workout, you can burn more fat. This is a study coming from Japan, Kobe University, very near to Kobe is where I did my PhD. Uh, well, the study was done on mouse, but it could very well be applicable for human beings too, right? Increasing in the oxygen consumption during the workout is the key for more fat burning. Pretty interesting, right? now about purpose in life isn't it so people who see themselves as control of their destiny or having a purpose in the life have better mental well-being and also physical well-being than those who see themselves as having less uh, control of their destiny so like if you attribute all your problems to the external sources like your manager is not good your workplace is stressful or your horoscope is not good so those people tend to live young uh, to live shorter and also their mental well-being is affected compared with those who thinks that the purpose and mission there is a life mission and it's up to me to live my life on a purposeful uh, uh, you know life mission you see so that is all about the an extrinsic motivation versus intrinsic motivation or locus of control 
that is very interesting story according to me i found it interesting yeah next story is about caffeine in almost all episodes of curiosity we do speak about coffee consumption which is actually linked with lower cancer risk and lower coronary artery di uh, disease risk and even life expectancy now this story is a little bit against those uh, conclusion so caffeine has a con you know it is not all pro the con of caffeine is that it can exacerbate a night of bad sleep so whatever the brain changes caused by the you know sleep loss can able to exacerbate that effect is aggravator if you consume the caffeine in the morning so in case you didn't sleep well then better avoid caffeine in the next day the whole day don't have anything uh, with containing uh, caffeine right it's not just coffee but also coca-cola or most of the soft drinks do have caffeine added into it so it's better to avoid it that is very interesting 15 story the amount of sugar consumed by the children uh, from soft drinks in the uk has halved after sugar tax has introduced in the uk so it's a new public health uh, system that anything that the companies are selling with high sugar amount uh, there is an additional tax so those uh, things like uh, coca-cola and pepsi and those soft drinks with extremely high sugary content uh, have become more expensive in the uk and that really worked that intervention really worked it's something like fat tax isn't it fatty food getting tax so yeah like this sugar this uh, this is the you know the study has published please check out the show notes so that is pretty interesting public health scenario i i wish this is repeated all around the world because the sugar we know that excess sugar is linked to almost all of the uh, you know the disease conditions that shortens the human life expectancy so yeah this tax i hope even in in india we we do have it can uh, you know prevent uh, yeah the unfortunate deaths and also it's not just about death but also expenses incurred for treatment you know and uh, another uh, pretty interesting intervention in in the uk painting roof with white color or reflective coating could be more effective at cooling the cities like london than vegetation covered green roof like if you have a building you want to convert the top floor that the terrace of the building into a greenery like an oasis like in singapore you can see that right almost all buildings have a lot of vegetation so is it better or having a roof which is all white or reflective so what the study found is that uh, you know this uh, instead of vegetation the white surface is so much better in controlling the urban heat island issue right the city center versus outside the temperature difference is called urban heat island and uh, yeah this intervention can work that is very very interesting yeah and uh, well this the story has uh, featured in one of the earlier episode of the curiosity too that um, glaciers in andes mountains of peru so one environmentalist uh, painted those rock exposed rock uh, you know is the glaciers do still have certain rock right so this rock is or pure granite rocks are black it can absorb a lot of ir and heat up and that causes the glacial re uh, retraction isn't it so this glacier retreat yeah there is a term so glacier retreat can be controlled if you paint those rock with white paints very interesting story is pretty relatable to this london uh, story and in montreal by the way in canada there is a rule that any new building should have white roof you know white or reflective roof you might wonder how about a solar panel by the way this is just opposite effect solar panel is pitch dark and it, it doesn't reflect off it it absorb the ir radiation so instead of solar panel well solar panel do have its own advantage i'm not saying no but solar panel in the urban setup might not be that good because that exacerbate the urban heat island effect you know that's very interesting another intervention in the uk is fine on extremely polluting car 
you know and um, london mayor famously uh, designated the interior london area as ulez that is ultra low emission zone so it it's not a ban on uh, polluting trucks but what they did is that ex, uh, you know excessive fine so in case uh, a polluting vehicle need to enter the london proper city center you need to pay more fine you know so that worked so now that urban air pollution has uh, you know substantially reduced in london center after this uh, designation of ule z and also fine on polluting vehicle uh, this is very interesting that delhi also right recently i read a news that any vehicle which is more than 10 years old will not be allowed to enter the delhi area uh, yeah this the center delhi that is pretty interesting but i'm not sure how practical this would be in a developing country like us but at least a fine even in london they didn't ban it right they they uh, put they enforced a fine so having a fine rather than a blanket ban is more possible so yeah so i think we can also uh, do that here in india too right so next story is about scientific literacy it's not like generic literacy literacy is like to know read and write a language right but scientific literacy is to understand the scientific concept and also the scientific methodology how science work right so having a high level of scientific literacy helps to reduce belief in conspiracy theories and fake news so to fight fake news increase in the public scientific literacy is the key as per the new study uh, yeah that is that's very interesting so you know uh, well scientific literacy is not just about science but also critical thinking right in case if you can increase the critical thinking that means to to find out the biases and uh, logical fallacies right in uh, various decision making processes then that that also can uh, you know fight this uh, uh, you know this issue of conspiracy theories and fake news very interesting now next story is about breast cancer can breast cancer be curtailed by mastectomy right so mastectomy as you know is uh, the removal of breast right angelina jolie famously did that double mastectomy after she detected braca positive braca1 and braca2 are uh, mutations in uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, breast cancer genes the oncogenes and yeah having this mutation will increase the risk of having the breast cancer now just by removing the breast will help to prevent the breast cancer no there is a new story say please check out the the link in the show notes so well another uh, pro probably the most famous animal that comes often in the curiosity the most curious animal is uh, an insect called tardigrade the toughest animal on the planet earth or degrade is everywhere even in antarctic depths of antarctic depths of ocean hot springs of the oceans you can find deserts like atacama and sahara you can find um, a degrade you know even in outer space the toughest animal on planet or toughest organism isn't it well wait a minute you can call it as an animal not the organism because now we have a plant to rival the tardigrade it is a moss uh, the name is centrichia canniveris right so this moss can survive 4000 gray of ionizing gamma radiation in comparison for us we human the survival uh, limit is 4 gray so this is 1000 times more ionizing radiation it can uh, sustain it's actually the limit is approximately 5200 gray see up to that it can survive no problem it's, it's not just the radiation the moss can survive everywhere where the tardigrade survive and much more and also multiple stress factors together no problem with that that is pretty interesting isn't it and uh, for example the liquid nitrogen right minus 192 degrees uh, you know celsius very close to the absolute zero the liquid nitrogen right uh, almost all living organisms cannot survive more than uh, 
a few hours in it. But this mosque can survive on up to one month of immersion, direct immersion into the liquid nitrogen. And even after one month, if you take out, it just leave. You don't need any other resuscitation method. You know, that is pretty interesting story. Next story, the largest nuclear reactor of the world has finished the construction. This is in France where Olympics are being held. France is, by the way, it's uh, almost entirely dependent on nuclear power. The French people don't have that much objection about against the nuclear energy, which is uh, green, you know, which is not polluting. The, it doesn't cause any air pollution, unlike coal. Uh, the neighboring country, um, Germany, for example, have no nuclear power because of the political landscape. People are anti-nuclear and almost entire power in Germany comes from coal majority of the power, right? most of the power. Well, how about this new reactor that constructed in, in France? Is it, this is called ITER. It is not even nuclear fission reactor. It's a fusion reactor, friends. The first and only fusion reactor. You know, by the way, the fusion is what powers all of us, isn't it? Any kind of solar, like EV or solar panel, everything, the energy comes from. Where does the energy come from? I'm speaking to you today. Fusion, nuclear fusion. How? Because that is the the uh, that is what is happening in sun. Right? Nuclear fusion is what powers the sun and most of the sat, uh, most of the star system. Right? So yeah, this is also a fusion reaction. Fusion is basically two lighter atoms are fusing together to make a heavier atom, and at that time, uh, a lot of energy is being released like the hydrogen bomb how it works right fusion of two protons yeah so um, yeah so to, to fuse this there, are, there is a big challenge that we need extremely high temperature that is basically the plasma right the fourth state of matter so uh, to get the plasma and to initiate the fusion you need the temperature which is hundreds of times more than sun the temperature of sun here in planet earth can you do that yeah. So to get into that extremely high temperature, we need a special kind of a, a design. And yeah, that is called Tacomark design. It's a Russian design, you see. It's something like a donut with extremely uh, highly powerful uh, magnets, coils of magnet that actually cooks the plasma inside it. So to get into extremely high temperature is not a challenge. But the challenge is that once the fusion starts, how to control it? So if it doesn't control, then it can even melt the whole nuclear reactor and the whole building, even the whole city and even country, what not. So yeah, so that is the challenge. So that is why this reactor is not going to run for the next 15 years. You know, so unless we have better uh, and more stringent uh, technology to control, the fission reaction so that it doesn't become a runaway nuclear fusion yeah final story is uh, a, a new decision taken by food and drug administration of the us it bans brominated vegetable oils in any of the consumer products so manufacturers add bromine into vegetable oil so that its emulsifying potential is increased emulsification means that oil if you combine the oil with water, it will not mix properly, right? So to increase this mixing of oil and water, you need an emulsifying substance like bromine, right? So if you pump in the bromine, it, be it becomes easy for mixing up. So that is why some of the uh, uh, some of the products which need emulsifier is mayonnaise. And also any drink with citrus flavor, you know, the, the lemon flavored drinks, like soft drinks or squash. So whenever you buy anything which has this citrus flavor, it makes sense to read the label. Does it have bromine in it? Brominated vegetable oil? Then wait a minute. The decision to purchase and consume might not be good, you know, and also buy a nice. And the study links consumption of brominated vegetable oil with thyroid, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. You know, 
enlargement of thyroid is called hyperthyroidism right so yeah especially this is linked with hyperthyroidism so check out the show notes for all the cover notes uh, you know cover uh, all the the show notes all the the original articles of uh, this month's episode and the cover image or the cover story of this month is lena kapavir you know the miracle drug for uh, hiv prevention right prep or post exposure prophylaxis after getting exposure also suspected exposure you can take this to stop hiv from infecting you you know that is that's very very interesting and also we do have a facebook group uh, where volunteers to share and i encourage all of you whoever is listening to the curiosity to share science related stories into our facebook group coming next part of the curiosity is the observances science related 9th of uh, this month uh, the august 9th is indigenous people's day 12th is youth day youth day is especially important for uh, our academy young academy of india is targeted towards the youth of the country right and also on 12th uh, one of the most anticipated meteor showers of the year perside meteor shower in case you are from a high altitude region like in himalayas or in uh, western ghats or eastern ghats you can see it 14th is jupiter mars conjunction several conjunctions are coming up uh, like any any month you can see this conjunction 15th is our indian independence day 19th is humanitarian day and also the full moon of august it's called sturgeon moon sturgeon is by the way it's a fish in uh, fresh water it's a fresh water fish but it does actually go to the it can actually swim to the sea as well but predominantly it's a fresh water and sturgeon moon because at this time of the year this season of the year uh, you can find large amount of sturgeon you know huge colonies of sturgeon in great lakes of the america like in michigan right yeah that's why american tribals named this full moon the full moon of uh, august as sturgeon moon so let's wait for it 21st is moon saturn conjunction 22nd is a day to commemorate the victims of religious violence if you see the violence and death throughout the world homicide most of it can be attributed to the religion we have more than 4500 religion established religions every single religion say ours is the best religion our god is the best god and many religions criticize and attack other religious people so this particular day is a, a day of observation against the religious violence 22nd is a un observation 27 is moon jupiter conjunction 28 is moon mars conjunction and finally on 31st another meteor shower called origid meteor shower so let's wait for two meteor showers in august come into the final section of the curiosity the opportunities for the youngsters a uh, dbt research associate ship for those having a phd degree you can apply in biological sciences the deadline is coming up 7th of august that is just tomorrow is a deadline sun pharma research fellowships and awards are open 31st of august young researchers in any field of life sciences can apply for it you can apply for visitor scholar scheme of scar that is scientific committee on antarctic research in case your work is something to do with antarctic you can apply for this visiting scholar scheme 31st august is the deadline then mary slovakia curie fellowship mcsa global postdoc scheme is open now for the doing a postdoctoral fellowship in the european union 11th of september is the deadline and in addition a lot of uh, jrf score uh, and project position calls are open these position calls are shared as and when available in our facebook group the link is again in the show notes so please do check out so that's it for this episode uh, the august episode i hope you all a fantastic month ahead a month full of curiosity so i will see you soon with yet another episode in the month of september until then please take care and goodbye